How's it going, everyone? Happy Monday. Start to a new week. What I'm watching today. Here's the newsletter watch list. I got Tesla, Netflix, Facebook, mRNA, and AFRM. Now let's go through all the technicals, starting with the SPY. So I mentioned on the newsletter watch list that I feel like it's starting to make a short-term bottom. Obviously, it's a little too soon to tell, but it tried to make a new low the prior day, and that was a pretty nice candle. So it's holding up all right. It's still below the short-term moving averages. So there's a lot that needs to be done, but that's a decent candle. So just recognizing that, but once again, trying to not have too much of a bias. So the upside level that I'm going to be looking at is 434. If it takes that out, it holds up. I feel like it has some room to the upside. And then the downside level I'm going to be looking at is 431. And now the Qs. So tried to make a new low the prior day, took that low back and it's holding up. Still below the short-term moving averages, but that's a decent candle and feels like maybe this could possibly be a bottom. Once again, trying to not have too much of a bias. I just focus on price action and those technical levels. So the upside level I'm going to be looking at is 359.50 and the downside 357. And now Tesla, which had some big news, it announced that in the third quarter, it produced approximately 238,000 vehicles and delivered over 240,000. Getting the big gap up on that news, there was a nice flag pattern forming on the daily. 799 was that prior pivot high. It's trading right at it, but it broke it initially in the pre-market and now it's trading right at it. So that's some good news. Obviously, you would think that maybe Tesla has a chance to get going today, but I don't want to be too biased because in this market, sometimes news can get sold. So the upside level that I'm looking at is pre-market high, 802.50, and the downside, which is pretty far away, but just want to know where it is in case for some reason there's some aggressive weakness, pre-market low, which is 784. And now Netflix, so obviously a nice strong daily chart, had the gap down the other day and quickly got bought up off the 9 EMA. Overall, just still very strong. So the levels that I'm gonna be looking at are to the upside, I'm looking at 615. If it takes that out, it also has 619, which is all time high above. And if there's any weakness, just looking at pre-market low, 610. And now Facebook, and the reason why I'm watching this is because this is a nice bear flag on the daily chart. It's been pretty weak recently. There was some news over the weekend that a Facebook uh, employee alleges that the company prioritized profits over well-being of users in a CBS 60 Minutes interview. Just not the best news, and I feel like there's been a lot of bad news flow with Facebook recently. And just realizing that this 339 was major support. So if it breaks that, it's going to be breaking the low of the flag, the bear flag on the daily. And then I think if the market is weak, it could have more follow through. So the levels that I'm watching, if for some reason it does not break this low, it starts to get bought up in the off the open. It starts to take out pre-market high, 341. I obviously don't want to fight that short-term trend. And then if it continues to remain weak, I'm just going to keep chasing this down pre-market low. That's the level I'm looking at to the downside. And now mRNA, so broke major support on the daily chart. Look at this consolidation. It is now trading below that. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are stuck. It could barely even hold that prior day low in the pre-market. It broke it, so just showing continued weakness. So the levels that I'm going to be looking at to the upside, pre-market high, 335. If it takes that out and holds up, I obviously don't want to fight that short-term trend. And then to the downside, pre-market low, 319. And last on the list, AFRM, the reason why I like it, still a very strong daily chart, few days of consolidation, holding the 9 EMA above the 20 SMA. So the upside level that I'm looking at, 120. Been a big area of resistance. If it takes that out, being that this is still a strong daily chart, I feel like it could catch momentum. And then to the downside, pre-market low, 115. I do like the Tesla pullback a bit off the open. If this can find some support, start to work its way to the highs. We got that prior pivot high, 799, whole number 800 above, and pre-market high at 802.50, so a lot of technical levels above. I'm looking at the 800 calls. I'm gonna go for the two minute opening range break. Nice big move, 799, big breakout level, 800 above, whole number, and pre-market high above as well. Like to see this hold above 799, big breakout. As far as the data, look at the size, 800. A lot of size at 800. I wanna see if we can get through that.
Big size, nice whole number. A lot of orders are going to be at whole numbers. Just want to see if we can get through it. Nice, big break, big break. Big breakout. Nice break. All right, that was a really nice move. I'm going to take that quick move right there. Came into pre-market high, had a quick pop above it, and then started to pull back from that. That was a nice quick move. I'm just going to take those quick profits. Okay, so now obviously 799 was a very big level in the daily chart with Tesla as far as a breakout. That was the prior high after a nice tight flag pattern formed on the daily chart. So now, obviously take the quick move off the open. That was just a nice scout riding the momentum. Now, if Tesla can consolidate for a little bit, form a nice flag pattern, have a rest period because it's been a nice move off the lows from 792, essentially went 10 points straight up. So if it can hang out up here, form a nice flag, I think that that would be another good setup. So the only downside with Tesla is the fact that it gapped up so much. I really wish that the gap wasn't so big. Sometimes when things gap up a lot or down a lot, the opposite can happen. So obviously had a really fast move off the open, almost 10 points straight up. And as you can see right now, it's starting to give that move back up. Now, it doesn't mean that eventually it can't find some support and maybe work its way higher. But as far as just a rejection off the pre-market high, this kind of feels like it's broken. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of time that needs to go by in order for this to continue higher. So the thing that I like is when stocks have really big moves off the open, I like to see them hold above the nine and hold above the VWAP. When they break it, it just lets me know that I need to back off, you know, wait for things to look a little bit better. But who knows, maybe this can stay below VWAP and then it works its way into the downside gap. I'm sure there's a lot of people who probably chase that kind of were in the similar trade that I was in. I am consistent at taking quick profits. So when I get a quick move, I just take that move instead of constantly trying to hold a winner. So this is obviously a good example of this is the reason why I don't hold because yes, there are the one time or the there's the one time or the two times where it does work. When it doesn't, those losses can be huge because if you were in this trade and you did not take those quick profits because you thought it was going to continue to go higher, and then it takes out the lows and you stop out what was a nice win turns into a big loss. And that was me. I did that a lot. So now my thing is just to constantly take the quick move like I talk about in the videos. And then what I can do is if it continues to go higher on the day, I can wait for a flag pattern and then reevaluate the setup and then get back in the trade. But I'm just not a fan of continuing to hold stuff because this is what usually happens compared to the one or two times out of 10 where it continues all day. So obviously on a bigger picture, this pullback is not that big of a deal considering the daily chart is still very strong, but being that it rejected the high so aggressively, it is a little concerning. So now I'm just gonna wait. I would like to see this get back over the nine, back over VWAP, consolidate a little bit towards the highs, and then if it forms a nice flag pattern and then it breaks the highs, I think that it has a chance to go higher. But obviously I just got a really nice trade off the open. So took it within the first few minutes, held it for under two minutes, and I got over a $2 move on the options. So right now I'm not in a rush to take any trade. It's kind of my motto, the one good trade is all it really takes. And I know that now I'm up nicely on the day. I don't wanna screw that up. If a setup on Tesla looks really good and I wanna take it, I'm gonna make sure that I size down and I'm only gonna take three contracts. So I'm still watching Tesla, but this is why I use the nine and the VWAP. So I would like when they're above VWAP and above the nine to wait for the long, or if they're below VWAP, below the nine, to obviously wait for the short. But when something like this happens where it had a big move off the open, it is now just hanging below VWAP. You know, so obviously this 792 is a big area of intraday support. If it cannot get back above the nine and it cannot get back above the VWAP, and then the market, which is showing a little bit of weakness right now, this breaks this 792. For me, this is just a no trade. You know, I don't wanna touch this. I wanna wait till it gets back above VWAP, closer towards the highs, for me to wait for a long on it. I think sometimes where people can get into trouble is they just buy dips and they short pops simply just because that's what they've seen other people do. And it can be consistent at times, but then there are times where it's very easy to get caught. So I don't trade like that. I'm just not a fan of it. I really like using these key indicators, the 9 EMA and the VWAP, just as a general guide. When something is consolidating below VWAP, I generally don't want to buy it. I know there are people who do trade like that, but I want to wait till it gets back above it. And then I'd like for some sort of consolidation to wait for the long and then vice versa. If the daily chart is looking weak and it's consolidating below VWAP, 
forming a flag pattern and then it breaks, that's where I want to find a short. If it is weak and then it's above VWAP, I don't want a short above it. So that's just my way of going about trading. That's what works best for me. And that's how I use these indicators. And as an example, let's check out Facebook. So not really a super clean pattern here, but just to get the idea of what I'm talking about. So had a really big move lower off the open. The daily is weak. It broke that key technical level, that really big area of support, 339. Had a few minutes of consolidation. I like to see the opposite color. So being that this is to the downside and all, these are all red candles, it would have been nice if there was at least one green candle in there to form some sort of flag pattern. When it's just a ton of red candles in a row, I don't like to chase it. But even right now, like this looks like a decent flag. It has sold off pretty aggressively already, so I don't necessarily wanna chase this, but just getting the idea that big move lower, handful of minutes of consolidation, formed a bit of a flag pattern right there. It's below the nine, it's below the VWAP. The daily is weak, the intraday is weak. So here is that pause, big move lower, pauses for a bit, breaks the low, more continuation. This is how I trade. I'm trading momentum, I'm trading the open, and I'm just going with the direction of the momentum at the time, and then I'm taking quick scalps. And I'm making sure that when it's below VWAP and below the nine, I wanna wait for that flag pattern or some sort of consolidation, and then I'm going for the short, and then vice versa, when it has a big move to the upside, strong daily chart, nice period of consolidation, above the VWAP, above the nine, that's where I wanna look for the long. And keep in mind that there is a lot of different ways that you can use these indicators. This is just how I use them because it's the best way that works for me. So we're 20 minutes into the trading day. I'm still obviously watching everything, but right now I'm playing defense. I had a really nice trade off the open on Tesla. I don't want to mess a good thing up, but just kind of giving a market update. So SPY had the push off the open. It's below VWAP, below the nine. Looking at the Qs, Qs showing some serious weakness right now. Uh, looking at Tesla, Tesla a little choppy at the moment. Had a nice two minute opening range break off the open, which I took advantage of. Now it's just above the nine in the VWAP. Maybe this can get a little bit stronger. If it takes out high a day, this probably is gonna go higher. Looking at Netflix, Netflix had a big push off the open, made a new all time high. Look at this move, basically 10 points straight up in the first two minutes. And it's since given all of it back. And now looking at Facebook, Facebook's still weak. If anything, this looks like a nice bear flag right here. So big move lower, pushing back into nine. VWAP above, if this starts to show some weakness and this takes out this 330, I feel like this could go lower. And now looking at mRNA, so I had a big push off the open, had a huge gap down, started to sell very aggressively in the pre-market, and now it's just trading sideways right at VWAP, right at 9 EMA. And then looking at AFRM, push off the open, and it's since given that move back. So at this moment right now, I don't see a lot that I like, and I'm also realizing that I have a really nice one and done, and that mentality of, one good trade is all it takes. I'm really trying to listen to that. And unless something looks absolutely amazing, I plan on just being happy with the one and done day and a very nice trade on Tesla off the open. And here's a good example of what I was talking about when things gap up a lot or down a lot, they usually can do the opposite, not always, but look at this mRNA. So obviously had the gap down and then the move in the pre-market started to get pretty excessive. And since it's just moved straight up. So that's why I'm not a fan of the gap and go when the gap is really excessive, looking for big gap ups, big gap downs, and then trying to trade them for more continuation. It can be very difficult because when those gaps get excessive, I've noticed just over a period of doing this for a very long time, the opposite usually happens. Nothing is 100%, but just going with the probability. I was looking at Tesla for the new high a day, but I think honestly, this is where having a really nice trade off the open kind of throws me off a little bit. You know, I had that feeling of not wanting to mess a good thing up. And even though this setup was okay, I mean, it went from 796, basically straight up about six points, you know, so I, I would have felt like maybe I'm chasing that a little bit, but here's an example of I'm a human being. I have emotions like everybody else. I kind of started to overthink it. I didn't really want to take the high a day because I didn't want to mess up where I'm currently at. So that was a moment where I kind of let the P and L and just knowing that I'm up nicely on the day screw with the possible execution of a really nice trade for a high day break, but it is what it is. You know, you can't catch everything. And I've just gotten to a point where I'm okay letting things go by. Really the main thing that I'm focused on, which I talk about in my videos all the time, is just being consistent. And then I know that once I'm nicely green on the day, I'm better off just backing off because I don't want to mess a good thing up. So that was just a good case of that. It is 30 minutes into the day, nice one and done off the open, nicely green so that means it's time for me to call it so now let's go check out the pnl 
quick scalp on Tesla, only five contracts and made $1,100 in under two minutes. Very happy with the trade and a nice green day for me. Thanks for watching the video. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I just wanna highlight a couple really cool things that I have to offer. The first is my newsletter watch list that I'm gonna be posting on my private Twitter 30 minutes before the open of each trading day. Here's an example of what that's gonna look like. So I'm gonna do a quick overview of the market, the SPY, the Qs, the upside levels, the downside levels, and then a sentence or two is to the overall bigger picture. Make sure to highlight any market news or events that are happening that day. And then I'm gonna list the four to six stocks that I'm watching that day. If there's any company specific news, all the upside levels and the downside levels, and then do a quick bigger picture, a couple sentences as to what's going on in the daily chart. This is everything that's in my head prior to market open. This is how I prepare and a really easy way to get access to my trading process. One page with everything I'm looking at, all the technical levels, and all the news delivered 30 minutes before market open in a really organized fashion. Also, I have a call service, so if you want something that's a little bit less of a commitment, you wanna connect with me directly, talk about my trading, my journey along the way, and just connect with another trader, this is really great. And this can be a video call or a regular call, whatever you're comfortable with. It's a one-time fee and it's gonna be for one hour. So if you're interested in either one of these, I will put the links in the description below.